Which did you get into first, photography or diving? Well, the answer to that is photography and particularly underwater photography. My first camera, which I got when I was nine years old, was an underwater camera. I didn't try scuba diving, although I wanted to, until I was 13 years old and I was actually 14 before I dived in the sea. So it was photography first for me. And actually, when I did my scuba diving training, I couldn't wait for it to be over so that I could finally take my underwater camera on a scuba dive. What's your favourite creature and location to photograph and why? Well, I think it's really important as a photographer to always be passionate about what you're shooting at the time. For example, I, I would never take a, a beautiful picture of some seaweed if I was constantly dreaming of seeing orcas or great white sharks or something like that. So I always try and be passionate about what I'm shooting at the time and not be dreaming about other subjects. If I had to pick a favourite creature, I love seahorses. Although it's more than 10 years since I've had the chance to photograph one in the UK. They're, they're a real treat in the UK. But around the world, I see them fairly regularly. Um, favourite location? I do love ph photography in the UK because I think you have the chance to really surprise people. People expect me to bring back beautiful pictures when I'm on a coral reef. But if I'm just sort of, you know, clumping my way up a beach in the UK, people are amazed what I can show them on my camera. What's the most interesting behaviour or event you've witnessed underwater? Well, globally, my favourite was definitely seeing coral spawning for the first time, particularly because in the location that I, I photographed it for, um, it was the Cayman Islands, and no one had ever seen mass coral spawning in the Cayman Islands before. And I went to the scientific literature, had a look at uh, what you know predictions for the region, had a look at the oceanography of the Cayman Islands, and made some predictions and actually flew to the Cayman Islands um, in the hope of seeing it and managed to see it and photograph it. And those predictions have been accurate for the 22 years since I first made those predictions. Every single year, they've been able to see them since. So that is a really special thing for me. Within the UK, it was definitely seeing dragonettes spawning and getting the chance to photograph those, which remain the only pictures of those subjects spawning in the UK. What's the scariest moment you've had photographing underwater? Well, I've had the chance to photograph many of the ocean's top predators, but I've never had a hairy moment with any of those. Um, the majority of those species really are not antagonistic in any way towards people. The probably the, the, the sort of the most sort of unnerving moment I've had underwater was actually with a bottlenose dolphin. And it was a lone bottlenose dolphin that I guess, for want of a better word, was very much in love with me. And dolphins are very strong. And when they want their way with you, you don't have a lot of choice in the matter. And actually, it was potentially, although it's very funny, it was potentially dangerous because this dolphin was pushing me along underwater um, very, very quickly. And it could have easily pulled out my regulator, taken my air supply, knocked my face mask off or push me deep or push me up very quickly, all of which are dangerous underwater. What animals do you want to photograph that you haven't yet had the chance to? Any bucket list species? Well, there's loads out there that I've never had the chance to photograph and loads that I really look forward to in the years to come photographing. But if I had to restrict myself to the UK, I think the one species I love to photograph in the UK is a leatherback turtle. There are occasional visitors in the summer months to the offshore. No one, I don't think there's anyone's managed to get a photograph of one underwater in the UK yet. And so I'd love to encounter one, perhaps feeding on a giant barrel jellyfish. That would be incredible. So that's my wish list. Please, please, please make it happen. What marine species do you think is overlooked in the UK and why do you like them? Well, for me, this is not a species. It's very much a group, um, the group of invertebrate life underwater. Invertebrate life underwater is incredibly diverse, far more diverse than invertebrate life on land. There's so many different ways to be an animal underwater. And when you go exploring in the underwater world, whether it's in a rock pool whether it's, you know, looking over, you know, the side of a harbour wall, whether it's going underwater as a snorkeler or as a scuba diver, there are incredible invertebrates to enjoy from, you know, colourful, incredibly beautiful, tiny nudibranchs to super abundant dead men's fingers, soft coral, that sort of orange and white and carpets the seabed, um, all the way up to intelligent animals like cuttlefish that have fascinating behaviours when we get to watch them. There's so much invertebrate life and I love it. What makes a great image truly great? <laughs> well, if I knew the answer to that and I could bottle it, I guess I could put my feet up right now. Um, thinking about 
all the great photographers that I know and I'm you know privileged to call many of the fantastic photographers at MPL friends. The one thing that I see that unites all of them is a tremendous passion for their subjects. And as a result, they tend to know a huge amount about them. And that passion for them tends to drive them to greater photographic heights. They want to share that love of their species through their images. So they'll stay longer. They won't settle for a, a good shot when they know there's an excellent one potentially there. And I think that's what really defines those types of photographers. And I guess that's a step towards creating really great images. Is there a particular depth you prefer photographing at? Well, I guess the flippant answer is, is wherever the species that I want to photograph is living. Um, but actually, actually, as an underwater photographer, one of the great things about being an underwater photographer is you're free to move freely within three dimensions. And I think that is a, a wonderful freedom as a photographer because it really means you can shoot your subject any way you want. I love photography in shallow water because the light for me is more spectacular in the shallows. And those are often the stories I'm more interested in telling where you've got that beautiful light, an abundance of life. And it's often the species that, they, that sort of the general public can really relate to because they've they maybe glimpsed them, you know, on holiday, snorkeling, or maybe seen them, you know, from the side of a boat. And I think telling their stories really resonates with people. What's the biggest piece of advice you would give to someone starting out in marine photography? Well, I guess the first thing I'd say is definitely do it. The ocean needs photographers. I've never met anyone who knows the ocean who doesn't want to conserve it and doesn't work hard to do so. Um, the big problem the ocean has is that the majority of people in the world are not connected with it. And that's really where marine photographers can come in. They can help with their images bring people closer to the ocean. And being a marine photographer does not mean that you have to go underwater. There are amazing marine species that you can photograph without ever going underwater. There are amazing marine stories to tell without going underwater. All I'd say is get out there and start shooting them. 